everyone. Thank you for joining us this week for our live weekly series of Empower Hour. I am your host and founder and CEO of Empower Employ, where we are uh, providing corporate education and technology solutions for veterans and military spouses, as well as corporate companies who want to hire them. On Empower Hour, we like to spend this time with you discussing and showing off and featuring the uh, change makers in the employment landscape, talking about their programs and uh, helping you connect whether it be with transition or whatever is going on in your life. So really excited about today. I have somebody that like everybody knows, but I have never gotten to personally interview. So today's guest is uh, Matt Quick, also known with his hashtag on LinkedIn, which is hashtag quick note. So on a quick note, hashtag quick note, let's talk about Matt's bio. So Matt is a retired U.S. Army Sergeant Major. He retired in 2019 after 25 years of service. His dedicated, um, he's dedicated his entire professional life to helping others build their careers. Um, beginning in 2003, Matt built armyreenlistment.com and he owns and runs the certified digital networking and careers uh, coach program, as well as done a ton of his newest feat, which is veteran outreach and the executive director, I'm sorry, veterans outreach for the PMI Institute or the Project Management Institute, as well as the executive director for the Dylan Quick Foundation. Oh, and lastly, with all of his accomplishments, he is the uh, vice president of programs for the Association of the United States Army AAUSA Braxton Bragg chapter. Matt also sits on numerous other profit boards. So little known fact that I learned about Matt this week uh, that I've never known from stalking his LinkedIn all of these years is that Matt was actually stationed at the Pentagon on 9-11 and was an extra, and this is really cool, on top of being at, you know, the Pentagon, uh, was an extra in the Transformers 3, Dark Side of the Moon, way cooler than the Pink Floyd song. Sorry, don't hate me. So now that we've got this very awesome intro and you guys are all hyped up, let's bring up to the stage the one, the only, the hashtag quick note, Matt Quick. Hey, Matt. Thanks hey, for I'm here. Us. I'm are here. You are. I'm so excited to see you. So I have been, I think like everybody else, I mean, it goes without saying you have mass followers. We've all been following you forever. Um, somehow, thanks to LinkedIn and the way that the, you know, uh, algorithm works, you popped into my my stream a couple of years ago. And I've just been following along and I'm really just excited about all the advice that you give. Um, I will put my stamp of approval on Matt Quick if that means anything. Everything he says is gold. So if you don't follow him. Oh, big old nerd. Yeah, but you're <laughs> awesome. So let's kick it off really quickly and um, tell us your story about, um, you know, your, your we talked about your military journey, but tell us your most recent story about serving the military community. Um, talk about your passions. Let's just get to know you a little bit better for the new people who have never met Matt before and have never had this opportunity. There are a few out there, Lindsay, a few million people that don't know me yet. And that's and fine. Not- we'll get there today. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk all about you. Tell us about yourself. So really, so I'm from New York. So if I speak fast, um, if you can speed your hearings up, that'd be great. If not, we'll just, we'll, we'll, I'll calm down a little bit. But um, so I, I served in the Marine Corps first and then the Army because I couldn't hack the Marine Corps. Sorry, I couldn't do it. I needed an easier life. And then I spent <laughs> 25 years in the military. My last 15 years was retention. So I kept people in and my secret to keep people in is give them options for getting out. That's all you got to do is you've got to care about people. So my last assignment was as the U S army forces command, uh, retention sergeant major, which is the biggest command in the army. And one day I woke up, it was like June of, of 18. And I said, um, to my wife, I said, I, th- I think I'm done. And I was only in 24 and a half years. I was going to do 30 years. I said, I'm done. Um, and it wasn't anything bad. I was just overwhelmed with my wife's family passing away, my nephew passing away. I was just overwhelmed. I couldn't give 100% to everybody. So I went to my 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 uh, my boss's office that day, and I said, I'm I'm done. I'm going to retire in three months. And that's what it was. Of course, they tried talking me out of it, give me any kind of assignment I want, but I was really done. So to me that was good to have the support of my command to allow me to retire a little earlier. It's normally 12 months. 
I took a three month window to retire and I had good people that could step up, do my job, train it for a couple of years. So it was an easy transition. And I understand transition is hard for, for people. For me, it was easy, but we'll get into that later on, Lindsay. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that awesome story. So Matt, you have this amazing career. I mean, you mentor hundreds of people, but like who helped you get, I'm sure it wasn't like one person, but who um, comes to mind when asked, like who helped you get to where you are? So number one person is Jeff Stissel. Uh, he was the command sergeant major for the old guard when I was there. Uh, and he was the command sergeant major of US, U.S. Army Africa. He tried to bring me over there for an assignment. So when I first woke up that morning, I told my wife, to my boss, and then I called Jeff Stitzel. I'm like, what do I do? I'm not prepared for this. He says, how long do you have? I said, three months. He goes, here's what you do. Do these three things and come back to me next week. So I did these three things, came back to him. So for, for, for him and I, it was more of a, hey, do these things. But I trusted him for years now. So it was my mentor. So I trusted him. I did, what he has, I did what he asked me to do, and I was successful. But before that, I spent years paying off my debt. I had no debt, so I didn't need a job when I retired. I was good. But he gave. He said, hey, life insurance, uh, VA claim, this, this. I trusted him. I did all that stuff. And then Jeff also says, get with Mike Quinn. Go to his USO Pathfinders workshop there on Fort Bragg and introduce yourself. So I went to the class. I'm like, LinkedIn, I had it for like nine years. I'm good. I had no idea what I was doing. This is four years ago. So I learned from, from, from Mike Quinn about LinkedIn. Um, I was good on social media, but I had no idea about LinkedIn. So I applied what he taught, and then I just took that. And he's like the Yoda of LinkedIn to me. And I'm like the Jedi, you know, Luke Skywalker, whatever, maybe Baby Yoda, who knows? But it's that kind of stuff. I, I took the information and ran with it. The thing about it is, is we can get all this information we want. Once we apply it, that's when we become successful. Just like you, Lindsay. Same thing. Oh, well, thanks. So uh, for me, I mean, I've had like a ton of mentors. And uh, if I had like 30 seconds to give somebody a shout out, I've never formally recognized like Lenore Lucas. She is a veteran herself. Um, she was the wife of Colonel Lucas at Fort Drum and really was comfortable in standing in her own skin as a spouse. And she really sat me down and helped coach me to get me to relaunch Empower Employee and stand in my own and just she's fabulous and has her own career. Just if you're looking for a mentor or you're a spouse or a vet, she's a great resource as well. So next up in the hot seat, my favorite question to ask everybody, Matt, is what is your truth behind a transition? Not the good, not the bad, and sometimes the ugly. Um, hashtag truth be told. Tell us all about it. Here's the one thing that people don't tell you when you leave the military. I mean, they'll tell you all the things you should be doing, but they don't prepare you for people not reaching out to you again. That's fair. I've actually never talked about that before. So um, let's actually dig into this really quick. I know that's a one line. So I really have never thought about that till just I'm now. I'm sorry just, about that. No, you just got me. That's the best truth drop I've heard like to date. And I'm like, oh, so it is. It's actually, if you think about it, it's really awkward because you spend, you know, 10, 15 million hours a day. If you got 25 years of service, you spend more time with these people than you do your family. And uh, after, you know, 30 days, 60 days are almost like a forgotten person. And it's something I like say to my husband all the time when he's like, I'm going to work late and stay for that meeting. And I'd say, but why? Like, I don't know how to tell you this man, but like in 10 years, heck in 30 days, nobody's even going to remember that you were here. Your duties have been transitioned. Your impact was amazing. It's not that no one appreciates your service. You're never going to talk to these people again, unless you're just like, really bonded. Now for me, I keep track of some of our people. I'm still friends with my original AIT bunk mate. I watched her pin uh, master sergeant the other day. And then I chuckled to myself. And nice. thought, yeah, I was like, that could have been me, but no, thank you. Like I'm good. Um, so that is very true. 
Um, so if you don't constantly make that effort and it can feel very lonely, right? You went from having a sense of like brotherhood and sisterhood to like nothing. And so, yeah, I, I, how was your experience with that? Did you experience that? Like, I don't remember feeling alone at all. I was so excited to go pursue my life that I was like, I hate all of you. I'm going away. I don't really feel that way. I love you all. Um, but yeah, so what was that like for you? So going from the number two job in the army when it came to retention, you know, the, the Pentagon was number one, I was number two. So you had like almost 500 people that worked for you across the nation. So you always talk to them, interact with them. But you mentioned 30 days, uh, Lindsay, that's a lot of time. As soon as I transitioned, that was done. I, that was, that was done. But for me, I was so focused on spending time with my family, uh, my my dying father-in-law, my dying nephew. I, I had purpose in my life. But but once that was over, then I had to find something. But I still w- was built, building higher military with Mike Quinn. You know, there was still purpose. So I don't fault those that don't reach out because the Army must go rolling along. And it does. But just yesterday, we had um, – a, a re-enlistment ceremony here at the Fayetteville Woodpecker Stadium uh, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I got to reacquaint myself with like 15 career counselors that I knew back then. And they all said, you know, how are you doing? What's going on? You know, I'm like, well, if you're on LinkedIn, you'd know. But it's that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's that kind of stuff. Get on LinkedIn. But yeah. they don't they, they they lose focus of a single person, which is fine. But there are people out there that need the rank and positions that ultimately, you know, do self-harm to themselves because they lose that sense of worth. This is why having that meaningful employment, you know, through Empower Employee, these things are important because meaningful employment gets you up in the morning and it, it, it lets you not think about the demons that, that could be there. So just having the, just having the employment is good. And I, I, I tell you, there are a few people that I talk to on a regular basis from the military still, but they're good friends for years. I'm saying people that I, I wasn't close with, no one contacts you again, unless the relationships you had for years. Yeah. So using some things I like, Uh, I just feel like I need to back you up on. So (laughs) uh, we talked about um, like I made a face and now I'm afraid to say it out loud. So you talked about like grief and how or like demons and how like meaningful employment like gets you out of bed. And that's kind of, you know, we've talked about it in the past, but considering we're two days away from an anniversary for me personally, you know, the passing of my brother really brought us here. Our birthday bash is on his actual birthday. And Matt, whether you knew it or not, I think I probably messaged you during that time frame and you probably asked me for something. And I was like, hey, I can't. But you were really cool about it. And you have been awesome about, you know, being a support system because like you really get it. And you're right. That is what motivated me to like get out of bed. Um, so we've we've talked about earlier in the 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 broadcast about um, the Dylan Quick Foundation. And we really didn't get to dig into that. And I feel like, you know, we talked a lot about transition, but do you mind, I know it's a little off the cuff, but spending 30 seconds to talk about the foundation and what it does. So the Dylan Quick Foundation is for my brother's son, my my sister-in-law's son. He passed away after a five-year battle of cancer from age 14 until the age of 19, almost 20. Um, he, he battled cancer. Uh, it was Ewing sarcoma. It was a, a, an aggressive form of cancer. Uh, poor guy had so many surgeries, a toe removed, which he was cool with. You know, it's, it's that kind of stuff. You know, he had a positive attitude. So as it was January of 19, I just got back from my first post-military trip with my wife. I got back there. My brother says, hey, it's time. Sorry about that. So we, we get to the hospital in Greenville and we spent about a, you know a few hours with him. And we asked, I asked my, my sister-in-law, would you mind asking Dylan if we can keep his message going on through a foundation? And she, we asked him and he was cool with it. And then he passed away hours later. So this foundation is really for my sister-in-law. She needs this. Got it. Well, I'm sorry to take you to an emotional. No, it's okay. 
<laughs> thank you so much. I mean, yesterday I was telling uh, Flossie, like, hey, you know, my brother's birthday is in two days. And look, <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing. So we're not going to cry. Um, and it's just a really big week for us. And so I was like, you know, I figured it would give you an opportunity to talk about something else aside from transition that people don't know about you. So let's ask you one more question. It's a really easy one, a little more lighthearted. Sorry. You know, like the cool thing about, you know, transition and, and being a leader is like, you have emotions and you're you're real too. So uh, last good question or two quick questions actually is uh, one, how do people get in contact with you? And I'll preface this with, I'm going to give all of you the answer, but then I want Matt to give his answer. Matt on the very bottom of his LinkedIn, if you've ever wanted to be featured or you ever wanted to contact him, it literally says, complete the following steps to get my attention. So I'm going to say this to you again, go check out his LinkedIn in the bottom section, read the instructions on how to get in contact with him. It's basically the only way. Um, it's a good introduction is what I'd say. If you can follow those steps, Matt will give you the time of day. If you can't, read again and try again and see how it goes. So Matt, how do people get in contact with you? Through LinkedIn. So LinkedIn. go to my profile, go to my about section, and I have three ways, a Calendly, which fills up quickly, an email address, and if it's an emergency, Text me. I'm cool with it. I've got a very supportive wife and family that understand that I probably need this in my life to, to help others. So they're, they're supportive. So go there, check it out. Um, have fun with it. Yeah. And so our final closing question that we ask everybody, we know my answer is Fort Urban, California, and people think that I am crazy because of this. But what was your favorite duty station? I think Fort Drum was my favorite. Right. So I'm the glory. Besides being in the Pentagon, which was cool to me as a professional thing, Fort Drum, just the environment, the blue skies, the great water up there, the two weeks of summer, that was phenomenal, Lindsay. <laughs> So my last duty station before coming to Hawaii was actually Fort Drum. I know some of our team and advisors are up in upstate now, and that's wholeheartedly true, two whole weeks. For me, Fort Drum is special because I rebuilt my family there and Empower Employee was launched there. So it's really cool that you feel that way. I have found that Irwin and Drum have been my two favorites, and people always think that I'm a nut job when I tell them that. So uh, Matt, I need to thank you so much for joining us today and providing the excellent guidance that is updated and accurate for everything that you do. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I can't wait to continue this and uh, we'll talk about it later. So everyone else, join us again next Wednesday for our next live series of Empower Hour, where we will have Karen Childers Wiley of Ronstadt Source Right from the Veteran Center of Excellence Right. She's awesome. Uh, don't want to miss it. Uh, shameless plug, if you're already watching, on Friday is my Empower Employee Birthday Bash. We have giveaways. I've got cookies and cupcakes and all things I want you to be able to celebrate with us. If you're transitioning, I'll con Matt into coming back maybe. See, so look, I just put him on the spot. We'll see. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on Friday for our second birthday bash. And thanks for tuning in and have a great week.